G'day everyone, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me, and today I'm talking frogs. Frogs are amphibians. Now some interesting facts about them is that they're early warning indicators for ecosystems, like a canary down a coal mine. You'll have to find out what that means. But frogs in an environment, if the environment is healthy, the frogs are fine. If the environment is not healthy, if it's polluted or there's disease or something like this, the frogs are one of the first species to disappear. Some of the reasons for that are because they're ancient and they don't deal well with change. But how about this? We breathe as humans through our nose into our lungs or our mouth into our lungs. Our frogs have nostrils too. And they can breathe air in but they actually absorb oxygen also through their skin, whether it's in the water or in the air. Now you imagine if there's some pollution in the water, the frog is gonna absorb that through their skin. And what do you think that does for them? It doesn't equal a happy ending. There are so many different species of frogs. You've got tree frogs and marsh frogs and toads and toadlets, and they all have slightly different characteristics your tree frogs are the ones we normally know, the big green frogs like Kermit the Frog. Now those beautiful big green frogs are green because they camouflage through the day. They sit on plants that are green. Now if you're a toadlet and you live on the ground, your camouflage needs to be different. They're normally brown and a little bit uglier, but I think even the toads are really spectacularly looking. Now some frogs are poisonous. Now a cane toad has glands that when a predator bites it, that those glands excrete venom and they go into the predator's mouth. Bang, the predator's dead, no more threat. Other frogs excrete toxins through their skin. And some of them, I've had it heaps of times, you touch a frog and then you rub your eye and your eye gets sore, gets red because the frog had a toxin on its skin. Frogs love the rain and it's just started to rain on me. Now, amphibians, they really need to keep moist. So when it rains like this, around the edge of a pond, like the behind me here, if this was nighttime, it would be alive with frogs croaking. And they're there right now. Some of the tree frogs are in the trees, some of the toadlets are in the grasses, but they live along the water's edge. And you can think too, that's where all their food is. So their food is mostly small insects. Some of the big tree frogs can eat things like geckos or lizards or small mice or birds. But most of the small frogs and most frogs eat a lot of insects or invertebrates. Frogs have a really interesting life cycle and it's really different to ours. So when a male and female mate, the male uses his strong little arms and he gets a little bit of a grip in here on his thumb. It's like a bit of sandpaper and he holds on to the female and he holds on tight. Sometimes two or three males will try and grab on, but that female will only mate with one male. And what happens is the female lays her eggs into the water in a safe spot amongst those reeds and the male fertilizes them. Now what happens then is the incredible part. The frog eggs hatch and they're tadpoles. Now tadpoles can be as big as my thumb or as small as the end of a pin. They have a little tail and they feed underwater. Some eat other tadpoles, some eat algae and slime. But the next thing that happens is they start to turn into a frog. Some, just that happens uh, by the time of year. Some happen because they lay in pools of water that are contracting. The water's disappearing, so the tadpoles have got to turn into frogs. And when that happens, they grow legs, they grow arms, they lose their tail, and one day they leave the water. Then you have a baby frog. It eats a bunch of insects, it grows up, and that cycle goes all over again. Frogs, like most animals, have lots of threats. And that's why they all have different camouflages. But threats to frogs include things like snakes, goannas, water birds like egrets, and the frogs have to be able to camouflage and stay hidden enough to avoid those threats. Some homework for you today. I want you to draw for me a life cycle of a frog, from mating to eggs, to tadpoles, to leaving the water as a baby frog, and the whole way around. Show me in the comments.
Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Now, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. This is what I do, connecting people with nature, and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.